Hello, and welcome to another episode of America Unveiled. Today, we're in Rome, Georgia, home of Joe Foss, a Volkswagen enthusiast, and much more. It's got no mercy. Do you not realize that? <laughs> the engineers don't build them for you. <laughs> they, they build them on a piece of paper and then you're supposed to be able to build them and put them together and fix them but sometimes that doesn't work all too well it used to be a hobby but now it's gotten so out of control that I don't know which way to jump I'm getting old and I'm falling apart but I still want to have fun my brain wants to have fun but my body says no can you believe that <laughs> That's part of getting old. You gotta have fun. You gotta wake up and smell the roses. You gotta see the trees for the forest because pretty soon you're not able to do that. But that's life. It's, it goes on just like the rest of it does. You know? So. It's been fun. And you know, hopefully it'll continue to be fun. I want to resurrect them all. But you know, a lot of people say you can't do that, but by golly, we're making a hard run at it. I would probably say roughly in uh, 17 years I've been playing with them, I have, I have shipped these trucks to 17 different states, and I'm probably at a number of, that's went through my hands and I've had and what I've had on the property here, I've probably had probably between three and four hundred. Wow. And that's that's just saying a rough estimate. <laughs> During the early days it was crazy. When fuel prices go up, they come be they become the demand, but on today on today's market what it is now is uh is uh, kind of the younger generation and uh enthusiast end of it that they love to take and uh, play their games of putting different hot rod motors in with them. The O2s or the VR6. And uh, you you want to see a scatting little truck that'll wake up the pavement. That'll do it. <laughs> and I, in fact, I just sold one here uh, that went down to Florida that that's what they're going to do with. So it's, it's kind of neat to hear that the younger generation, some of them were taking it over because us older guys and the generation of these diesels, they're, they're kind of a lost, kind of a lost uh, episode in life. Well, Joe, I appreciate you uh, letting us come uh, visit your rabbit farm today. And uh, how did you get into collecting this vast number of uh, Volkswagen trucks in particular? Well, it started when I was living up in Montana and I had a couple friends of mine that had them. And, uh, in fact, one of the fellows that had one uh, fell asleep at the switch and got killed in one. Wow. And the, old, the other fellow was a truck driver, and I'd always see the truck, his little truck sitting at the truck stop, sitting there in the winter months, just running away. Mm -hmm. He'd go out there and tell, hey, Miles, your truck is running. Yeah, I know. I'll, I want to get into a warm truck. And he said, what little bit of fuel that sips? It's well worth it just to let it sit and run. Right. So when I moved down this area, I started looking and I found one that just happened to be on an orchard. They, they used it as a orchard truck and just played with it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, hauled their, their, uh, haul their stuff off. Uh, it's, I think it was like an, uh, they had or oranges, or not oranges, apples and, uh, apples and peaches. Mm -hmm. and they'd load the truck up with it and take it to the to the barn that's all but anyway I started with that one there and and uh, I didn't know all that much about them and I started having problems with it and the motor was getting weak and I took it downtown here locally and asked the guys to take a look at it and see what they could do with it and it sat there for two months and it was nothing but a big run around so I said okay so they weren't able to repair it successfully? They, they could, but I think they was kind of leery of, of, of doing the job and possibly not getting paid for it maybe. They oh, didn't right. know me or something, I don't know, or what they had curtailed. But at any rate, I said that 
you know, somebody's, you know, it's man a machine. Somebody's built it, so why can't we fix it? Right. So, now, you've always been mechanically inclined. Yes, I've been. I've been playing with. The, I started out with little scooters when I was just, you know, 10, 12 years old. I went from little motorcycles to the big ones, and I started building cars on the side, kind of as I was younger, playing with them. And I actually in Montana, I, I had a bad El Camino. Mm -hmm. Have it up there that I built those up there. Right, those so can get expensive as well. Yeah, yeah. But you progress from El Caminos into the Volkswagen. I can understand having one Volkswagen, appreciating it, appreciating it, and driving it. But it looks like you've got uh, more than one or two around here. How how <laughs> did that become a rabbit habit, as you put it? Well. When I first started playing with them and I couldn't find nobody to work on them, I said, well, that means that there's probably quite a few sitting around that needs to be put together and mm -hmm. run. So I got myself a book and I started teaching myself out of the book and, and playing with it. Well then pretty soon I got to kind of checking into things and come to find out the Volkswagen truck itself was only built here in the U.S. for four and a half years. That was it? And that was it in Pennsylvania. Do you know how many was built? 77,000. That's not many. Yeah. So I got to studying on that end of it, and I'm thinking, you know something? Maybe a guy better start gathering up a couple of those because they're not going to be around. And I started gathering them up, and, you know, it, it takes money to do it. So, I, of course, I... I'd, I'd buy one and then I'd sell it and I'd buy two or three and then kind of roll over and fix and go and pretty soon it kind of like they started multiplying and you know I just uh, Did you ever find it hard to get rid of one of them but you have a particular fondness for? No this this butt don't don't fall in love with any seat. No? <laughs> it's it's all iron and it's gotta go. Right. <laughs> you know but it's it's not the idea of the money end of it making it's like i say it's a hobby to me it keeps my brain going keeps me somewhat physically fit to where it keeps me going that type of thing no i mean it's really not any different than a than a, a doctor working on people to try to keep them healthy and last as long as they can yeah. uh it seems to me that that's what you're doing for these uh older volkswagen automobiles yeah i tell you what what's really killed what's killed it here in uh well really on any uh, any of the old cars is what happened here mm, probably eight eight years ago ten years ago when iron prices went insane mm -hmm. china was buying up everything they could possibly buy right well pretty soon all this old iron a lot of it got scrapped it got it? scrapped and taken off the market yeah, you can buy aftermarket parts, but you can't buy a whole truck. Right. So, you know, that's when I really went ape, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, it, "I better get serious because there's not going, there's not, they're going to disappear and disappear fast." You you deal in and uh, a lot of uh, diesels, in specifically. Have you always had a particular fondness for diesels, or, or did it just happen to be that that's what uh, Volkswagens were? The ones that were still around were mainly in diesel, and you just kind of gravitated to it in that direction. Well, well I guess really when it started out to be is I, I guess I got diesel in my blood because mm -hmm. I, I was in the truck stop business for about nine years, and then I went into the, I worked for a freight liner mm -hmm. repair shop for nine years, and then from there I, I went to a, to a to run and own my own wrecking yard for nine years. Now so that was not all nine. in Georgia, was it? No, this was all in Montana. Yeah. It was all in Montana. But you're originally from where? Minnesota. Minnesota. That's, yeah. you know, and the, and the killer of these vehicles is, is the rust. If uh, you get a rusty floor pan, that's fine, you can fix it. But what happens is, is the salt from up north gets up into the strut towers mm -hmm. and, and and when you lose a, your suspension, it you can fix it, but oh my gosh, it's astronomical to get right. it done, you know, and get it right. And I, myself personally, <clears throat> I don't think a truck's ever safe after you get done welding on a suspension. Really? I I, I just don't feel it. Hmm. I mean, if it's 
If because if if that's a main structure and that's where your suspension, your A arms, and everything are running, and you get in there and start heating and distorting things, that ain't right. Right. You know. So you know. Yeah. Anytime you augment the conceptual integrity uh, of anything, uh, it's not a hundred percent. Right. Right. And I just don't. I don't feel comfortable. I mean, I've had several of them that I could have built, but I just, I've, I pretty well have boned them all out. I bone them out, take everything I can possibly take off of them, and scrap the rest. What brought you to Georgia in particular? I actually was working on the road doing fiber optics. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the fiber optics kind of went on the wayside, and I started having health problems, and just a combination of... <laughs> a divorce, IR, oh, wow. IR, IRS, and, right. and prior to that, a partnership on a program that I was in, my partner took off and left me with uh, the stick. That's never a good thing. <laughs> so that was just, it was just one, of, it's a lesson in life, you know, you learn. You can always go out there and make more, more money, but oh. not as much as like you used to and like you, you know, you'd like to, but to survive the game. What do you need, right. you know, really nowadays? Well, how about let's take in a few minutes and walk around and see some of the ones you have currently in your collection. Let's, let's have, her, have at her. Which ones do you want to see? It was interesting seeing all your uh, your vehicles so far, and you're standing in a, a garden of Volkswagens now, and uh, or a, a farm of Volkswagens, as your your shirt your shirt there says <laughs> Joe's Rabbit Farm. That's interesting. It. Hey, has there been any particular vehicle Volkswagen vehicle that you've enjoyed more than any of the others that's been more personal to you or do you see them all as you're a doctor bringing these creatures back to life and helping them achieve their ultimate longevity well i guess there is one in particular it was more than one but at any rate years back when i started playing with these I contacted a guy outside of Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. He had one that had 126,000 miles on it. And he had bought it brand new. But he had somebody work on it that didn't know what they was doing, so it created problems. Right. So he said, I'm done. I'm not going to. So he put it up for sale, and like a meathead, I did. That far away, I said, why not? Get another one. So that's what we did, the wife and I jumped in a vehicle, we went out to this side of Dallas, and at the same time I said, well, well let's go have some fun, let's go to San Antonio and do the river walk. Mm -hmm. So that we did, but on the map it only shows about this far away, but boy, well, that was a trip. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I, I got to know Scott, and uh, Scott and Norma, and she's, uh, they, they broke the mold when they, I mean, a couple that you can't, I mean, it's so honest and so nice, it's unbelievable. But mm -hmm. at any rate, Scott asked me, he says, hey, do you like those Volkswagen trucks? And I said, oh, I don't know, you know, you know how that is. Well, he says, you give it some thought. He says, when you come back up here, I'll, I might want to talk to you about a couple others. Mm -hmm. So I get back from San Antonio, and he takes me out in the pasture, and he's got five more trucks. Five more? Well, <laughs> so... Four of them he bought brand new, and uh, 
and two of them was a parts truck, and the other one he had end up as an extra that offered through his brother. But at any rate, that 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 really got the rabbit turds in my veins. Yeah, <laughs> that, that started that started you, know, you down the, <laughs> the, the path. Yeah. So anyway, so I told Scott, I said, well, I'll tell you what, let me sleep on it. And we traveled back home. I called him back and I said, well, Scott, we'd have to figure something out here on this. I said, first of all, the, we need to know the number on them. He said, okay, I'll give you a price you can't refuse, which he did. But I said, the problem we got, Scott, is you know how far that way is. From my doorstep to his is 725 miles. Mm. So I said, Scott, I said, I'd have to be able to come and get them as I can. Right. He says, no problem. I'm not going nowhere. I'm, I'll be right here. It took me eight years to travel back and forth and get them all. Wow. But in between, eight years. Eight years. And in between that, I ended up buying a little green four-door 80 or two-door 80 rabbit that he had. Plus, I bought a rare UK car, which they call a Faisal Vega. Hmm. It was on the cheaper end of it, but if it was fixed, that was actually worth about ninety to a hundred thousand. But if it would been the rarer one, it is worth probably over two hundred grand. Wow! So anyway, I had no idea that they they had that type of value uh, on a Faisal Vega. It's an oddball. It's mm -hmm. an oddball, you know, overseas car. But any rate, and that's that's. And uh, I haven't talked to him for a while now, and I kind of kick myself on the tail, and I need to because he's having health problems. And but anyway, that's kind of ingested to me into, man, it's, let's get him going, you know. So at any rate, the red pickup there, the yellow pickup there, the silver gray pickup there, those there, and then I have his, the, his personal black truck is in the garage. Mm -hmm. And they're still here oh. after, after about 50, 15 years. <laughs> they're still there. So, but I guess just like the black truck inside, I sold it once and I bought it back and I said I won't sell it again. Right. The only way I'd sell it or do anything with it is I'd fix it, put it back together, and I'd take it to Scott. I mean, by that truck. time, it had obviously become part of your family. Yeah, it has. It's like, We call it the black stallion. Right. Yeah. You know, so I... You know, we get the silver ones. I, I call them the silver bullets, and I've had so many silvers. So I saw a silver bill, bullet one, silver bullet two, and just you know the numbers out. But I would say probably that that's kind of that black one's got my, it's got my mm -hmm. attention. It's it's here, and I guess it's going to stay here. It's interesting because you see, it's very common to see people uh, interested in Ford or Chevrolet or. Mercedes, but you don't see a lot of people into Volkswagen. Why do you think that is? Well, it's the knowledge. People mm -hmm. don't understand a lot of times the me mechanical end of it. And the, and the crazy thing of it is, is you take these trucks here, they start building them in 79, the cars was earlier, but you take these cars back in 1980, was getting 50 to 55 mile a gallon with diesel. And on today's market, we still can't get that. Wow, yeah. Now, is there something wrong somewhere? Yeah, there is. It, it's our... 50 eight, to 55 miles a gallon is astronomical. It is. For any automobile. <coughs> and these were getting that back in the 70s, um, which is one of the reasons that they initially appealed to me even, and I'm sure you. Yeah, that's, so. that's what got me, because I, I puddle jump a lot, I drive around, I'm, I don't like sitting at four walls, and I like to go see what's out there and mm -hmm. kind of look around. So it's cheap enough. Why not go do it? You know, and that's what we do. You know, when I, but I've kind of lost track of that, so I kind of got into trying to build these and my other stuff. But life goes on. Now people often associate VW with uh, German engineering, and and it is a German company. But you said they were the trucks were built here in the United States, so. They, what's what's the no, what's behind that? They actually they, they, that was the, that was the first thing that that Volkswagen, Volkswagen wanted to do to move into the U.S. So they they started in Pennsylvania with it, and they tried it four and a half years, but it it was just born. But I say it's born before its time. Right. 
because you know nobody else out there was getting that kind of fuel mileage no. you know i mean even if they're gassers they was getting 30 35 mile a gallon you know it was just it was crazy you and know, the fact so, that this, it was diesel ensured uh greater longevity for yeah. the vehicle itself yeah and the problem there again is is the knowledge people didn't understand actually what they had and how to drive it because from a gas to a diesel it's it drives it you keep the rpm low on a diesel don't run it hard you know mm -hmm. i i say don't run them hard and put them away wet because that's exactly what you can end up with is a it's just a pile of you know but but at any rate that in year in, in years to come now you know they 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 ship the plant to uh overseas and finally it's ended up down in uh in south america and they're mm. still building them today but it's a way different configuration of a body they're but, still building the volkswagen trucks yes they call i them didn't a, realize they, that they actually call them a caddy uh, it's a caddy now but they're still. not available here in this country no it it's political yeah but now we got like the, most things. we got the plant there in the chattanooga the volkswagen plant there now so I th I think in years to come you're going you're going to see a Volkswagen truck come back come to the U.S. But they they got hit hard on this this uh, new testing on the Volkswagen. <laughs> oh right, I heard about that. It was you know, last year, year before, I think. Yeah. But you know they got a spanking, so it, and it's not going to run them off. I mean, they, all they done is they 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 learned that you know. Just like anybody, you can't cheat the system. Sooner or later, you're gonna, it's going to bite you, you know. Right. And that's and that's and it's not just Volkswagen. It's U.S. companies doing the same thing. There, there. It's it's always some kind of cover up somewhere. So, you know, so, you know, take it as it is. But I'm just sticking to the old iron act with the new stuff, and I can work on it. No computers. I can uh, well understand that. I'm sort of anti modernism myself i don't even have one of those little phones that everybody swoops around <laughs> on and, and yeah technology is passing us old farts up so fast that we can't we can't absorb it well i i see it sometimes as, as marching backwards into the future yeah because I, I think sometimes that's what modern technology is we reached i think our glory day to where everything was built solid it lasted a long time and then for political reasons or, or greed, it's starting to decline now. And yeah. we've been on a rapid decline for a long time. But I think people like you and the automobiles that you love and cherish and work on uh, are an institution that is dying out. And it's wonderful to see people like you resurrecting cars like this and keeping it alive for the younger people to enjoy. So. I, I get it all the time. I, even though I've, I've lived in this area for 17, 18 years, and I go to town with one of these trucks, <laughs> right. I, I still get it. They'll come over and give me that funny look and look at that. I never knew that Volkswagen made a truck. Right. <laughs> you get that all the time. And if you go out of time, town, do you, if you're at a gas station somewhere, they're always waving you down saying hey where did you get that thing because it's just it's just an oddball you don't see them you know they're just all slowly fading away you know uh, i think you're uh, a good representation of the so-called halcyon days of not only uh american life uh but volkswagen itself yeah well they've they've been they've been fun they've kept me healthy you know you know, of course, we all break down at certain ages, but you know, and I, I, I still got a long ways to do, go because I plan on living to be 102. 102. Yes, that's my plan, mm -hmm. and I told the wife that I'll be down here walking with my <laughs> walker, or my powered wheelchair, and I'll be down here working on these. But mm -hmm. hopefully, I can get somebody adopted into me to help me and 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 pass it on. You know. Yeah, I would like to live old enough to where I can look back on my old age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a tough world out there, but with technology the way it's going, you 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 know, we're just living older and 
you know, but sometimes we suffer from what what we did in our younger years, you know, right. car wrecks, fights, oh, you know, yeah. crazy stuff like that, you know, but the pushing and the pulling and the craziness, but that's life. Right. That's fun. Well, let's look around some more. Yeah, there's plenty here to see. Well, the, the addictions of these is this one here had come out of down by Douglasville, Griffin area, and that that one here has been here because it was an oddball set 80. I'm looking for a 79. And the reason I'm looking for a 79 is, is they only sold 78 of those. And that was the beginning of the Volkswagen truck. And I want one. I was thinking it was this one, but it's too far gone. I don't know if I can resurrect it or not. But that's life. This one here, it's got an extended cab on it. I drug home from Texas. Why? It was just one of those deals I had to do, you know how that goes. But anyway, parts, I can't have enough of them. I want to be able to, when I'm working on one, if I need something, I want to be able to walk in either in the backyard or off the shelf and pick it up. I am not going to, you can't go to the wrecking yard and find them. So here they are. And this is, this is my collection as I go, but I'll probably be out of this section here. I still want to be build at least 10 of these, but 102 years old, I got a lot of time, don't I? <laughs> when it comes to these toppers on these Volkswagen trucks, they, 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 these only fit the Volkswagen truck. So they're getting harder and harder to find. And in my early years, when I go get a truck, I look at the topper and I'd throw the to topper off the side and say, I don't want to drag that home with me. But guess what? I should have drug everyone home with me because you can't find them anymore. Well, you can find them, but it, it's, it's really getting tougher and tougher to find. Uh, so I've been gathering a few up. In fact, the latest I've, latest one is, is actually the green one that I was standing there talking with you on it. I went to Iowa and picked up four of them up there. What sort of value do they have? Uh, in the condition, uh, minimum is 200 and they go, go as high as 550. So wow. you get a rare one like that oversized one over there, uh, it's, uh, they're hard to find. I, I, there's one that's got a half cab that I like to find. It's a half a cab and it drops down and goes back like this. I've only seen two in my life, and I want one of those, and it, it, it's premium. It's really rare, rare to find one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna find one I'm, one of these days, but that's one of those wishful, th wishful thinking ones. But it, one of the trucks that I brought home from Scott was this one right here. We 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 fought it and fought it, but I took a trailer out there, and I wanted to take two of them home with me. So then it was wrecked in the front end, so what we done is we just went ahead and cut the nose of it off and, and loaded it on the back of the trailer and made it work. But uh, a rare one, like this one right over here, this, that lime green one, it's, uh, this is an 80. This is an 80 model. As you can see, it took a hard hit. Hard hit. I never did get the whole story on it, but this truck has been here probably roughly about six or seven years. I pulled this out of a guy's garage that had been in there for 30 years. The truck has got 26,000 original miles. But that's so. What's the history behind that? I'm sure if the <laughs> if the truck could talk, it would tell us a a real interesting story of how it got wrecked and how it got shoved in a garage for 30 years. And here it is in Joe's farm, but so be it. I'll take it. It's rare. I've, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the color green, the force green, that makes it a rare. And if you, if you can find either a car or a pickup in this color, that, that, that's, that's a rarity. Because I've got, like I say, I've got that silver one sitting next to it. It's an 80 there. And I've got that yellow one that's an 80 there. And then I've got that red one that's sitting behind us. In 1980, they sold 21,000 of them. 
they jumped up that high. And then I think in uh, 81 they sold uh, 23,000 and then they kind of started filtering off and that's how, how it's ended up to be in the highlights of the Volkswagen years of the Volkswagen trucks here in the U.S. But they were just born before their time. It just, you know, when, when back then you figure in 1980, fuel was 25 cents a gallon for diesel fuel. Well, who's thinking about fuel mileage and driving and doing all that stuff? Nobody really cared then because gas and fuel was cheap. But now with the sign of the times and two dollars cheap now, but when it comes to that four or five dollar stuff, you get people overseas that are paying six and seven, Canada's paying six, seven dollars a gallon for it. Yeah, it's, you know, when you start talking 50 mile a gallon out of a little diesel engine, you're talking a pretty serious uh, savings when it comes to, but now technology's coming, cars are getting that 30, 35 mile a gallon, you know, but you take and buy a new car, it's worth $30,000, drive it five years, and it's worth, well, 2000 That's about how it is. But you take one of these and you pay premium money, for, decent money for them, treat them right, keep them together, they pay for themselves for your fuel mileage, and you can always get your money back because you can't, you, they're just slowly going away and there's only so many left. So that's the way it is in Joe's world. You know, they, it, it's crazy as it may be that you see everybody's, one man's junk is another man's pleasure, or whatever you want to call it, but you take these tailgates, yeah, there's one or two standing here, how many do I need? Well, I need as, I need as, as many as I can get, because on today's market, these are bringing anywhere from 250 to $700, depends upon what kind of shape they're in. Uh, that's why you see a pile of them here. <laughs> So I'll, I'll, I'll keep collecting them, and then I'll, I'll do what I can do with the, to make them right. Collections and more collections. Today's generation, it's all throwaway and just go buy something new. And it's, uh, eventually that's going to bite us in the tail. It, it can't continue to be that way for the cost of things, let alone the earth can only take so much. So I would say, you know, if we could... If Younger generation would just, I guess, see the trees for the forest and smell the roses and stop a little bit. You know, there's there's kids out there that they they don't even know what a where to find a jack in a car to change a spare tire, let alone change a spare tire. And and that's wrong. And uh, whose fault is it? Well, you can put the blame on a lot of people, but nowadays it's too bad that. It used to be that just one of the parents would work and take care of the, the homestead, but now with the money situation, it takes both parents. With both parents gone, the younger generation is, is, is lost. They're in, they're in that black hole, and, and what do they got left to do? They buy them new technology to play with. You know, it's either on TV or it's on a, on a telephone. It's all... And instead of getting out and playing on in the yard and enjoying enjoying the sunlight and doing what we what we did when we were younger, that's kind of a lost lost situation there and it's I don't know what I don't know if it's ever gonna change. Not in my generation. I only got thirty seven years left to teach everybody this, but <laughs> Well, Joe, we've walked all around here, and it seems like it's never-ending. I mean, uh, you seem to have more than your fair share of Volkswagen cars and trucks. So what's the plan for the future? Are you going to obtain more? Are you going to add to your collection of adopt adoptees? Uh, well, I'll tell you the truth. I, when I hit 51 of them, I said that was enough. 51. Have, How many do you presently have? Uh, I'm, d I'm down into, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, I'm at 44. 44. That's right in there, right in that good even 44. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, nah, I, 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 I guess my biggest killer is uh, I'm to the point now that I want to take and get some of them done. 
right before I get any more in but at the same time I want to kind of thin down the herd and control it a little bit more and it's, it just gets rough trying to weed eat and clean around everything let oh, alone sure. let alone the sun and the nature is just killing them you know so if I can't get after them it's kind of hard to keep up with the, the roll of them you know but and as you get older you're a little bit slower you know it's, Heck, it used to be I'd build three, four a month, five a month. But you, know? you, you do. You told me you got up every day, got on Craigslist in various places, and you looked. So you're still looking oh, yeah. for additions to your family. <laughs> so if you were planning on weeding it down completely, you probably wouldn't be looking, or is that just personal interest? Well, you always want to see what the neighbor's selling their property for. Ah, right. So... And if the property's right, the price is right on the property, well, why not? Well, what happens when you come across a, a good deal or something that you've been looking for? I mean, what's the temptation now for you to pull the trigger and actually make the purchase? It would have to be something different, something special. Would it? Yeah, I just, right now I'm in the process of looking for a Largo Blue. Right. I want a, I want a nice Largo blue truck. When I started this adventure, I guess, here a while back, I had it in my head that I wanted to take, I wanted to build and resurrect every color of the, of, of the trucks. Right. And have them in my possession. How many original I, colors were there? Uh, don't hold me to it, but I do believe it's uh, 12 original colors yes I do believe so and then you know you get into the sports truck which they've got three different colors in the sports truck you got the yellow the gray and in the red now were all so, of these um, straight shift manual or was any of them uh, automatic it was a rare option but there it there is a few out there that's automatics but it's very very rare there's no it's not enough power in that little 52 horse motor with an automatic to direct. I mean, it gets you down the road, but it's a little bit slower. And even even the sh shift, you know, because you know, a 52 horse, you, you're not really pulling a lot of, you know, out, out of it, you know, but still, it, you know, they're built for, not, not for speed, but they're built for the fuel economy. Right. You know, and the longevity, if you, if you take care of it, maintain it, give them good fuel and change oil and the air filters. It'll run. But these little trucks, they can haul a decent load. I mean, you can use them as, as proper work trucks. If you, if you realize your stopping point. Right. Because, uh, you know, it's it's like any, it's just like a, you take that white GMC truck that I got there. You know, yeah, it can haul 12, 1,400 pounds. But you got to realize, ever how much you put in the back end, that's your stopping power gets a little bit weaker and weaker so you got to use this along with your foot on the brake to watch what you're doing because right you know you can't stop on a dime no so you know and I mean it's it it's it'd be horrified to get into a to a wreck because of, you have, had to put on that extra hundred pounds but they're actually rated at a quarter about a quarter ton on a comfortable weight it would be about 500 pounds that's what you'd want but yeah, we we've hauled more, you know. You, you always, I hauled a load of sand from town to do my kids grandkids sandbox. What a mistake! Yeah, I know somebody that hauls uh, fertilizer <laughs> and stuff for his farm on the back of a '81 or '82 Volkswagen pickup. Yep, they'll they'll do it, but you just got to use a little common sense on how much you put on there because right. I had I had that load of sand dropped in there the guy asked me how much do you want I, I said well how much do you charge and he says thirty five dollars a bucket well then you might as well give me a bucket should have never said that <laughs> by, by the time I drove from town to here the weight of that actually broke the cords and the tires wow. and, the, and the tires were going like this they didn't blow but they broke the cords wow and that's I wasn't thinking Getting your money's worth? No, it wasn't. No. <laughs> but it's a lesson. It's a lesson. I, I like you say. I, I it's they're good for puddle jumping and 
picking up small stuff running around and just having go for the fuel economy and enjoy it you know car well, show once in a while what's the furthest trip you've taken in uh, one of these little vws oh i'd probably say probably around 500 500 mile round trip maybe right. something like that roughly as trip wise as now when you come to ask me how far i went to go get them now I'll tell you one thing, El Paso, Texas is a long ways. You've been to El Paso, Texas and picked them up. And uh, the last furthest one I drug home is, is, the, is the red one over there with the round headlights and I drug it, I drug it home from Big Timber, Montana. Wow. That's to the tune of about just shy of 2,100 miles. And that's, that's enough. That's dedication, Joe. That's dedication. <laughs> well, I don't know about dedication. Uh, the wife works at the hospital, and uh, she has threatened me several times to, to bring me in there and get me a transfusion. <laughs> and I guess you know what that's for. Yeah. She wants, to, she wants a transfusion so she can get all these rabbit turds out of my blood and get me cleaned up and I get away from this. But... She, she may want to tra uh, transfuse your rabbits <laughs> into cash. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. That, well, that that's not a bad idea either. You know, a guy can always use a little bit of that green, yeah. pay the bills, but got to have fun. As you get older, it's the way it is. Yeah. Fun, you know. Well, your dedication to the Volkswagen uh, diesel pickups and cars surpass anybody's I've ever met, and that's why I wanted people to see your rabbit farm yeah. and be introduced to you. Now, if anybody uh, watching this wants to contact you and has a rabbit for sale or wishes to purchase a rabbit or just wants to talk about rabbits or has rabbit parts, how can they contact you? Right there it is, 706-291-6251. That's my home phone. Leave a message if I'm not here, but most generally I'm here crawling around on these. So we can, we can, uh, more so than anything that drives a wife crazy when somebody will call me and talk to me about a Volkswagen and I'll help them fix it over the phone. And she says, why do you help these people? Why not? I want all of these I can out there running on the road. Right. It just, you know, it's just, that's, that's, it's a, I guess, I don't know, it's, it's just me. You know, I just want, I want to resurrect them all and I want people out there driving them and I want the younger generation to realize that there is other iron out there compared to the plastic that they're dragging up down the road now. Absolutely, I agree. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just fun, that's all there is. Fun, fun, fun in the sun. Well, Joe, I appreciate you, uh, spending time with us today and uh, I wish you good luck and success in all future endeavors and uh, thank you very much. Well thanks for taking your time to shoot this and get a little knowledge out there and get that generation involved even the older guys what why not? Absolutely. You know, any, anybody we'll, we'll, we'll help them right into one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Joe. You bet. We got it. I hope everybody enjoyed their visit today to Joe Foss's Rabbit Farm here in Rome, Georgia. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>